This video will discuss how to do a hydrogen peroxide bath. Hydrogen peroxide is a strong oxidizing agent which has demonstrated efficacy against marine velvet disease as well as other pathogens such as Brooklynella, uranema, monogenian flukes, and even bacterial infections. At this time, we are only advocating that you use a 30-minute hydrogen peroxide bath for temporary relief of these diseases. It is very important to follow up treatment in a quarantine tank after the bath. The best part about using hydrogen peroxide in an emergency situation is that it can be easily found at most drugstores, grocery stores, and retailers such as Walmart or Target. You don't have to make a special trip to a local fish shop or wait for an online order to arrive for you to begin treatment and provide your fish with temporary relief. All you need is 3% USP grade hydrogen peroxide, a measuring spoon or syringe for dosing, a large glass bowl or plastic bucket to do the bath in, a measuring cup for adding the salt water to the bowl or bucket, and a metal spoon for mixing the peroxide into the water, or an air stone will suffice to mix it as well. Okay, how to do a hydrogen peroxide bath. Um, so the first thing you need, obviously, is, is salt water for the bath. Um, what I did to measure the salt water is I just used this to two cup and Okay, so uh, it's uh, 16 cups is one gallon. So I filled this up eight times to the line um, using salt water for my salt water bath. Filled it up eight times, 16 cups is one gallon. Um, I'm just doing a hydrogen peroxide bath on a clownfish that has brook. So don't really need more than one gallon of water. If you were doing larger fish or multiple fish, um, you may need to do, you know, two gallons, three gallons, or even more, just depending on how many fish. But that's how you measure it to be sure that, you know, you're precisely getting one or two gallons because I'm going to explain that in a minute. Um, what else? Okay, so I prefer to do the baths in a glass bowl, like you'll, you'll see here. Um, glass is inert. It's not going to absorb the peroxide. Um, it's also easier, you'll see here I have a, um, an air stone with air tubing, it's just easier for the suction cup to uh, stay there. Um, you don't have to use a glass bowl, you can use a bucket like this. The only thing is it should be a food grade uh, plastic bucket so it doesn't absorb any of the chemicals. So plastic bucket, food grade plastic bucket, or you can do a, uh, a glass bowl or jar like this. So we've got our water, um, I'm trying to think what else. You can, you can provide oxygen, it's, the fish is only gonna be in here for 30 minutes. As long as the, the water has been pre-oxygenated, you really don't have to provide an air stone for the 30 minutes, you can if you want to, it's, it's kind of optional. Uh, I've turned off the air conditioning so the temperature is gonna remain stable. But if you felt the need to, you could use a small heater to control the temperature during the bath. So what we're going to do now is we are going to dose the peroxide. And so it's, the dosage is 20 milliliters of 3% H2O2 per gallon of water. And you can use any 3% USP uh, grade hydrogen peroxide from grocery store, Walmart, drugstore. And you can use a syringe, but I just figured for this video, most people have these. You can use a uh, teaspoon. One teaspoon is five milliliters. So because we have one gallon of water here for the bath, we're going to need four teaspoons. So I'm going to take this off and we're going to dose carefully. That's one. That's two. Three, and there's four. And like I said, you can use a teaspoon or you can use a syringe if you have one available. That's maybe a little more accurate way to do this. Okay, so now we are going to turn on the air stone. There we go. And what that's going to do, that's going to mix the peroxide into the water. We'll probably do that for about a minute and then when we come back we'll have the fish in the peroxide bath. 
Okay, so this has been mixing for a few minutes now. So what we're going to do is we're going to be sure that, you know, we have peroxide actually in here. That, you know, sometimes you can get a bottle that's expired or just not as active as it used to be. So you can use these. Uh, Waterworks peroxide test strips. I'll include a link um, in the comments section. You can just buy these off Amazon. These only test up to 100 ppm and our target here is 150 ppm. But the point is really anything between 75 and 150 ppm um, is effective. So we're just basically going to use these just to be sure that, you know, we do have peroxide in the water and it's uh, effective. So Waterworks peroxide, you can buy them off Amazon and it goes up to 100 ppm. So let's just test the water. And it's a uh, little test strip. And what we do is we put it in here for a few seconds. And look at that. It's actually on the back here, there's a color chart. And you can see that we have at least 100 ppm of peroxide in the water. Again, the target is 150, but as long as it's 100 ppm or more, that's what you need for the 30 minute bath. Okay, when we come back, we will have our fish in the bath water. Okay, so here's our little guy with uh, Brooke. Um, he has Brooke and we're gonna do the peroxide bath. So we're just gonna gently put the clownfish in the bath. There you go. And we're just gonna, you know, Keep an eye on him for the first few minutes. Just be sure he's not freaking out. He's not having an adverse reaction. And then we will, I'll probably go ahead and start the, uh, the air stone just to be sure he has enough oxygen in the water. Again, as long as the water has you know, been heavily pre-oxygenated, you really shouldn't need an air stone just for 30 minutes. But you know, if it makes you feel better, you can run an air stone. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, clownfish is in the bath, and you can see, um, it's actually, I think it's a she. She's doing fine, and we've got some oxygen there for her. Um, when we come back, I'm actually, I've got like a second part to this bath that is optional, and I'm gonna do in this bucket right here. Um, but I will explain that when I come back. It's not really part of the peroxide bath, but it's something that I've been working on as a uh, second part after the peroxide bath. So um, we'll go ahead and throw that into the video as well since we're talking about this. Okay, see you in a few. The secondary bath we are about to show utilizes nitrofurosin green powder. We will show you where to buy this in the comment section. The bath lasts 30 minutes and dosage is 100 milligrams per gallon of salt water. A less preferred option is to do a methylene blue bath instead. Dosage for that is one milliliter per gallon in a 30 minute bath. Both chemicals provide additional efficacy against pathogens and will help the fish heal following the peroxide bath. Okay, so we've got about two minutes until he comes out of the peroxide bath. Remember, you only do the peroxide bath for 30 minutes before you transfer the fish. Now, I, we're gonna do a second part to this bath. This is optional, but what I've been doing lately is doing uh, either using NFG at 100 milligrams per gallon, or you can use methylene blue at um, one milliliter per gallon uh, for another 30 minutes. So that's what's next. So my wife is gonna show you first how to measure NFG. So the first thing, you have to do it by weight. So we're going to turn on, can you see that? Okay, so it came up to zero whenever it came on. Now we're gonna put the little measuring Bowl up there, and I like to use actually a little um, piece of foil. Just makes a bigger target, and it's easier than to pick it up and stick it in the the other. So now you have to hit tear. Which one is it? Right. It's the one right there, closest First? to the yeah. We know the glasses on. Okay. So that tears it out to zero. So now we can dose. It's again the dosage for NFG is 100 milli. 100 milligrams per gallon, and I have a one gallon bath ready to go for the energy. And it's always better to start low and put a little tiny bit at a time because it's a lot easier to add more. That's good. Than it doesn't have to be exactly 100, that's close enough. Always easier to add more than it is to take it away. So, there is your 100 milligrams. Okay. And we're going to pick it up. 
And put it right in here. And I'll fix it here a little bit. Yeah, see, this is why I don't like plastic buckets because the air stone doesn't want to stick to the bottom of the bucket. Glass works better. So you can do the. Oh, and that's our alarm telling us that the clownfish ready to come out of the peroxide bath. Yeah, can you just take this? And you need to like back that off. Okay, a little technical difficulty there, but as you can see, we've got the air stone in the bucket. And as I repeated myself, I'm going to repeat myself again. That's why I prefer using glass because the air stone sticks better to the bottom of the glass than the bottom of the plastic bucket. So right now, we uh, put the NFG in the bucket and we just kind of let it, like, you know, mix by using the air stone. Kind of, you can use a metal spoon or switch your hand up, whatever. Um, and now we are going to move the fish because it's been actually a little bit more. You can actually go a little bit longer than 30 minutes if you want. No. Not much though, come on buddy. Now we're gonna transfer the fish into the NFG. And then I'm gonna fix this air stone so that, so it's probably a little bit more important to provide oxygen during this NFG bath than it is the hydrogen peroxide bath because the antibiotics found in the NFG will, just, will uh, remove oxygen from the water. So I'm going to fix this air stone and make sure he has um, air throughout the 30 minute bath. 30 minutes in this, which is the second part, and then we're going to move him into his observation tank and hopefully work is gone. Okay. Okay, it has the timer went off and it's now been 30 minutes since the fish has been in the uh, NFG bath. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly 30 minutes. It can be a few minutes over um, before removing him. Um, yeah, I kind of, so you see, if you can see in the bucket, I ended up having to use a metal spoon to keep the air stone down. I kind of realized that halfway through I made a mistake. This kind of bucket is not a good bucket to use a bath. Um, you want to use a plastic bucket that is more smooth, especially on the bottom to, uh, so that the suction cup and the air stone adheres to it. This one is a little rough, but use a, you know, metal spoon. So to recap, 30 minutes peroxide bath, followed up by a 30 minute NFG bath. Peroxide was 150 parts per million, which is 20 milliliters per gallon of 3% H2O2. The NFG bath is 100 milligrams per gallon, or you can use methylene blue, which is one milliliter per gallon. So 30 minutes in this, 30 minutes in this, and then hopefully this fish is now free of uh, Brooklynella parasites. Uh, we're gonna put them in observation uh, to see if that is the case. If the parasites come back, I'll have to treat with uh, one of the other treatments for Brooke. But the purpose of this video was to show you how to do these baths. So, I'm gonna catch this little guy. Come on, buddy. Long day. And we're now gonna just transfer the fish over into the observation tank where we will observe to see if symptoms return. I'll probably do maybe a video tomorrow or some of them let him chill today. Okay, and yep, just hanging out. And as you can see, the fish is perfectly fine, unaffected um, from the bath, just swimming around. Okay, so one last thing I want to touch on before we end this video is, so if you were gonna run more fish through this bath, you know, the peroxide and the NFG bath, it's okay to reuse this water. The uh, medications will remain effective for at least uh, several hours. However, if you are going to do like say tomorrow, I'm gonna to run more fish through the two step bath. Um, you wanna dump, you wanna dump the water out. You wanna completely clean the bucket and the jar out. And you wanna use fresh bath for a fresh bath water tomorrow. So that's it. Thank you for watching our video. See links in the comment section below for more detailed information about everything we discussed. And join us on our forum for all reef aquarium related discussion.